So I've had students ask about citing works from the textbook and more students not ask about it and then do the citation incorrectly. So I'm making you a quick video to show you how to cite sources that are in an anthology. Now, what is an anthology? An anthology is a collection of texts that are compiled by a general editor or a group of editors. So the editors are not the authors of the sources in your anthology unless you find some introductory material um, and you're citing that, um, the historical context, that sort of thing. That may well be written by the editor, so be careful that you check and don't confuse the title of the poem or short story or other text with what the editor is writing to introduce you to that text. So the basics of work cited is that you start with the author's name, last name, comma, first name, and then the title of the source. And if it's a shorter work, like a poem or a short story, you'll put that title in quotation marks. Um, the container is the, the book itself. So the title of the anthology will be the container and it will go in italics. Um, a short poem and a short story will go in quotation marks, but you might find a play in your anthology and play titles go in quotation marks, or not quotation marks, sorry. They go in italics. So longer works go in italics, shorter works go in quotation marks. Um, this is generally the title of sources in quotation marks or typically, um, but you should, you should know as a student of literature or look up what goes in quotation marks, what goes in italics titles. Just you can look that up if you do not remember that from your high school days. The title of the container, the larger work, will always be in italics. Other contributors, um, you're going to have um, their role. So, for example, an editor or a translator, you will note that in the work cited. The version will be an addition, most likely, when you are citing from an anthology, um, or it could be a revision. Um, use Arabic numerals for ordinal numbers. So Arabic numerals are the numbers you've been learning since you learned to count. Um, so just so you know, all college students should know what Arabic numerals are. Um, the number, so you might have a volume number, it's volume one, volume two, or number. Um, you'll separate those with a comma. The publisher, um, so whoever the publisher is, it'll be a company. Like if it's a Norton anthology, you will list Norton as the publisher. The publication date, uh, day, month, and year, just like we always do for MLA format, even in the heading of our papers. And the location. So a textbook is going to be a print source, so you're going to list the pages and you're going to put PP. Now you don't do that for your in-text citations, just for your work cited. So PP period, and then all the pages of the whole short story or the whole poem, if it goes over two pages or more, um, or the whole play. You don't want to just put the page number of the actual thing that you're quoting, the actual line that you're quoting. Put the page number of the whole text. If it's a digital source, the location is the URL or DOI, if that's available. If you're using um, something on Alabama Virtual Library, you are likely to have a DOI listed up there for you. Here's a sample of a journal article, works cited. You have last name, comma, first name. The title of the article is in quotation marks. The New York Times is the work that this article was found in, the newspaper or website. So it goes in italics. The publisher is the New York Times, the date it was printed on, and then the URL here. That's all. Here is a book. So um, the author's last name, comma, first name, and middle name that was listed here in italics is the title of the book and then um, a 
subtitle after the colon. Harper is the publishing company in 2014. So unlike the New York Times where we know the exact day that it was printed on, a book usually just gives the year. So here's how we cite the Norton Anthology. You're going to use italics for titles of plays, titles of novels, um, of course textbook titles, epic poems, titles of movies. So I have listed these for you. So um, again though, if you are ever in doubt, just look it up. It doesn't take very long at all. Um, but you are going to start with the author's last name, comma, first name, if that's available. Um, if you are citing the Epic of Gilgamesh, you are not going to have an author because that is not a work that has a known author. And so that would start with the title of the work. Um, so use italics if it's a longer work. Uh, with the word epic in it, it's going to be longer, so you know that's going to be italics. Uh, the title of the anthology is always in italics. Uh, the editor, the publisher, the publication date, and the page numbers. So here's what it would look like if you were citing from the Norton Anthology of American Literature. The edition here is beginnings to 1865. It's the shorter ninth edition. So we have two volumes. One is beginnings to 1865 and the other one is 1865 to present. So make sure that you include that so it's clear for your reader. The general, general editor is Robert S. Levine. The publisher is Norton. And the year it was published is 2017. So looking at the bolded information, that's what I would need to use if I were to try to cite something, for example, um, if I wanted to cite The Way to Wealth by Benjamin Franklin, I would know that the author is Benjamin Franklin. So I'll take care of that. And Benjamin, period. It's always hard to type in front of people. Benjamin Franklin. Um, and then the title of the work, it's a shorter work. It comes from Poor Richard's Almanac. So if I were citing all of Poor Richard's Almanac, it would be in italics. But this is not in italics because it is the title of just the shorter work. So let me take off the bold and the italics. I'll remove the bold from Franklin's name in a moment. The way to wealth. Oops. And I need to fix my font. I want to make sure that I'm in MLA format. I can do that all at the end. And then the title of the book, the textbook, is the Norton Anthology of American Literature. All of that. Here's the editor. Norton is the publishing company. 2017. What else is in bold? The page numbers. So I need to cite all of the page numbers. And what did I need? I needed PP period, right? And I don't want a capital P. I want lowercase. Maybe it will work. All right. Uh, it starts on 208. I need a little space after that period. And it goes through 216, I believe. Nope, it goes through 214. Oh, no. I was on the wrong side. Oh, 214. Period. Always end your parenthetical or your work cited with a period. Now, making sure my font is all correct, I just can highlight the whole thing and go to Times New Roman 12 point. I don't want that to be bold, so I'm going to click bold and it got rid of it. If it had made everything bold, I would have just clicked again and it would have made that um, format correct. Now, I have another anthology here that I'm going to cite out of. Um, I have been reading to you from this book a little bit. So, and I actually posted this article for you to read this week, and I said that I would post the work cited for you. So here it is, a gift. Um, Now, in the book, they don't have every word capitalized there, so I am capitalizing it. I'm going to give the t 
title of the work, the individual essay that is in this collection, and then the collection, the title of the book or anthology, goes in italics. Oops. And then I have a comma. Is there an addition to this one? I don't believe there is. Nope. And so then I have to find, after the addition, the editor. So I'm just going to write, not in italics, edited by, because that's what it says in the textbook itself. I do need a space. That's what the red squiggly is telling me. There are two editors. And then I have a period and the publishing company is Harvard UP, that's for University Press. Um, what do I need after that? A comma. And then the year of publication is 2009. And I need the page numbers of that article. So back to the page numbers for that article. Where was it? It goes from page 59. I need the PP period. Not right next to that period. PP. Ugh, stop going capitalized. Okay. 59 through 63. Oh, or 64. And always end with a period. All right. That is how you cite a smaller work that appears in an anthology. So make sure you're aware of that. I'm going to do one more for my English 102 students out of their textbook. All right, so I have a poem by Philip Larkin, and it's called This Be the Verse. You might be familiar with this poem if you watched um, a series of unfortunate events series on Netflix, I believe it was. Um, and then I need to, that is the title of the poem, I need to, in italics, write the name of the textbook. The Hilton Introduction. Oops. Then it is the shorter 13th edition. All right. Okay. Period. And then I have a general editor there as well. It's the same company, so I'm going to format it the same way that one is. Editor. Or I could say edited by Kelly J. Mace. And then it may be a comma there. I don't know. Yep, it should be a comma there. Nope, editor. Good. Looking up here, always check. So I have editor, period, publisher is Norton. Um, this is not something that you memorize. Most people with all the commas and all that sort of thing. The publication date is here. I always have to look. Um, and then the page numbers. I've already lost the poem. Oh my. So now I need to find the page numbers of the poem. I'm going to look in my index. That's the fastest way to find it. And look for this be the verse. It was only on one page. It's on 849. I'm still putting PP period there. And I don't know why my computer insists on doing it that way. Um, but if I backspace, I can certainly make that adjustment. No big deal. I'm not going to let it get to me. Sometimes formatting can get to us. We can't let that happen. So it's just one page in this case because the whole poem fits on one page. Um, but for example, with this one, if I only quoted something from one page, I would still put all of the page numbers. So make sure that you don't uh, forget that part. Again, if I only quoted a bit from The Way to Well,